Ladies and gentlemen, it is finally here, the Zygu or Shagu X6100. It's a HF radio that also does six meters and it's a small form factor. Today, I want to do a brief overview on this and we're going to talk about uh, some of the features of the, the menu system, how to access certain things, how to use certain things, things that are kind of squirrely with this. And we're going to take a look at some of those bugs, those pre-production unit bugs that we were seeing on other videos. And we're going to see if those are resolved. And I'm going to show you a few more issues that might not have been talked about. So let's jump into this thing and keep watching my channel for more information on this radio. I wanted to start off by saying that this radio did come with a 40-page user manual, which I'll probably be using and jumping around in. So if you want to have your user manual, feel free. But I also do want to note that the user manual, although has some helpful information, uh, there's a lot of information in here that just doesn't make sense or seems incomplete. Okay, so this is an HF radio. It also does six meters, and I'm just going to give you kind of a look around of the radio itself. And the reason I want to give you a look around of the radio is we're going to kind of talk about vaguely some of the settings, and then we'll go into a little more detail. On the left side of the radio, you have your antenna in, which is a BNC a port. Below that, you have your IQ out, and you have a DC in. The DC in, as it says, it accepts 9 to 15 volts. And we'll get more to that in just a moment. On the top of the radio, you have certain things like your push to talk button. And this will come in handy because this radio does have a built-in microphone, as well as obviously a speaker. And so you could use push to talk and talk into the microphone and make contacts if you didn't bring the microphone that you should normally have with your radio. Additionally, we have uh, options up here to change your bands. And when you hit your bands one way or another, you're going up and down the band. I'm going to show you that you could actually change this here. And we're going to go into our first menu item, okay? So this radio has a menu. If uh, you didn't see these settings down here on the screen, radio setting 1, 2, display setting, and so forth, you would just hit the general button until you saw these. So for example, right now I see a bunch of key information. All I'm going to do is hit the gen button, and then I'm going to go to radio setting 1. If I go to radio setting 1 and I change it over to bandstack, and I actually hit the up arrow here and go to all band and then hit this checkbox. What's going to happen now is when I hit the band buttons, I'll then be going in between not only ham bands, but also jumping in between the other bands like shortwave listening and so forth. Now, I will say that they actually fix the issue or feature, I guess, whatever you want to call it, uh, where if you used the band stacks like this and you were out of a band, you could still transmit. Because in the radio settings, I selected Bandstack and I hit this checkbox, what happened is I now have a shortcut menu here, Bandstack All Band. And if I adjust this bottom left knob, it switches or rotates in between All Band and Ham Band. Uh, now when I go ahead and I rotate between the bands up here, I'm only going to be jumping between the Ham Bands and then All Bands. I could change this to anything I want to really in the radio settings menu. For example, if I tap on radio setting again, and I bring this over to the TX power. I'm going to go ahead then and hit that checkbox. And what's going to happen now is I could adjust my transmit power from 0 watts up to 5 watts. And right now it's up to 5 watts because there's nothing plugged into the radio for an external power source. The radio has a 3000 milliamp hour internal battery with 12 volts DC, which we will test later to confirm that it's actually 3000 milliamp hours. If I were to key up the radio on, say, FM mode while plugged into a dummy load, I should expect to see somewhere around 5 watts of power max right here, you see, and I can't change anything. So let's do that right now. Well, we're at about 2.5 watts, or excuse me, 3 watts of output power. Yeah, somewhere about 3 watts of output power while not plugged into anything. What this appears to indicate is that the radio is going to reduce the output power as the battery life is depleted. With the supplied power supply or charger that came with this radio, which is 12 volts, if we were to key up now, we would still only see a minimum output power. And the reason for that is going to be this radio to use 10 watts RF output power in single sideband CW or FM mode, 13.8 volts. So right now, again, we're in narrow FM mode. And if we were to key up into a dummy load, we see about four watts of power. Now we'll test that on a meter at another episode as well. 
but basically we only have four watts of power. And it says right here, TX power five watts. This is where the first bug kind of comes in and I want to show you. Because I'm plugged into this, it didn't matter what the voltage was. It allows me to change this up to 10 watts. But regardless, we're going to get two and a half watts, but we're still only getting about, I'm sorry, three watts or four watts out. So this meter here, this little meter here, should not be actually showing us the ability to do 10 watts of power because we only have 12 volts in, but it is. Let's see what happens if we plug in something that's 13.8 volts or more. I now have my Anderson power pole connectors plugged into my power supply. I'm showing 13.7 volts, but let's just see if it'll do 10 watts still. All right, now we're getting about five watts, which was accurate because when I keyed down, I still had five watts here. And when we increase this here, again, I just want to make it clear I wasn't testing the power output rating, more so giving you the example that if you're not putting in the full 13.8 volts, you're not going to get your full 10 watts of power. Using the DC block only allows you five watts of power, even though the meter will allow you to change it to 10 watts here, regardless of what's plugged in here, as long as something's plugged in. The buttons on the top here where it says mode, they switch between the modes. And so for example, we can switch between AM and FM, CW modes, and then sideband modes to include sideband digital. The buttons that are on the right hand side here, there's a couple different options here. So this button's the A band, B band button, and it just switches us between this little B band here and the A band. The next button is two things. It could be a preamp, and if I tap on this, the preamp becomes enabled, and you can see my noise level went higher. If I tap it again, I'll disable my preamp, but if I hold down this button, I'll actually put on an attenuator. As you can see, the attenuation light just popped up there. Let me go ahead and disable that. We're gonna talk about the ATU, or the automatic antenna tuner, or the antenna tuner. Right now I have it disabled. If I tap on the button once, it enables it. And if I hold down the button, it actually tunes. This radio has a built an antenna tuner if you weren't aware. Hey, stop the episode. I'm in editing right now, and I noticed something that I want to point out that seems very off, okay? Right now I have power plugged into the radio. I am operating with 13.7 volts, and if I use the antenna tuner, I want you to listen to the relays. You get an idea for how fast they are. However, when I plug in USB-C, and this seems to happen on most bands, uh, but it's not as noticeable on all the bands, and I'm assuming it's probably because the antenna tuner is working harder, but I want you to hear how badly this slows down, and this may be of concern, I'm not sure, but I want to point it out in case it is a concern, at least you all are aware. You see those relays have slowed down. And if I unplug USB-C, they speed up again. So there's something I believe with the USB-C that's restricting the ability for a full antenna tune. A couple other things we have, we have options to switch between our VFO and memory mode. I'll show you in a later episode how to add memory channels to this radio. We can enable and change our automatic gain control by tapping on this button. As you can see, the automatic gain control on the screen went to slow, fast, and auto. For sideband modes, I'm gonna leave it on auto here. And then there's this option here, fast. And that allows us to scroll through the band a little bit quicker. You know, I think it's a good time to mention another problem with this radio. Let me know if you have this problem. This VFO knob, you can kind of see it right here. There's a layer of foam right here. That layer of foam, when you're scrolling through the VFO, especially at this angle, that that foam is grinding against the, I think the, the body of the case. And what's happening then is, oh, I'll tell you, it feels like rough sandpaper. It does not feel good. Uh, I just wanted to make that known. So if you're having the same problem or maybe Zygu could fix this in the future. And so with that, let's go ahead and turn the volume up a little bit. As you can see right now, it does show that I'm on volume. If I were to hit this button right here, the volume button, I would actually be rotating between the squelch threshold, the RF gain, which I currently have set to 10, and I can go up to 100. 
And then we can go back to volume two if we hit it one more time. And we can turn our volume up. Let's try to find a f station here and see what this sounds like. I want to turn on the noise reduction. And there is depths of noise reduction level. Maybe it'll be better on this bigger single. When I enable noise reduction, and I did that by hitting DFN, and under screen one I hit noise reduction, and then I use this knob here, but then I can hit noise reduction depth, and it's like a it's like an algorithm, and so basically I'm adjusting the depth of how much noise reduction I want to have, and there's an algorithm or a computer inside of here that's actually being able to determine what is probably noise and what's not, and more depth we have, the more aggressively it filters things. I'm gonna leave that at three for right now. This is your noise blinker. You could also enable or disable it. And then you can set your noise blinker width and level as well. And finally, if we were to hit the DFN button one more time, we would get into the second option of the digital noise uh, uh, filters, if you will. And we have the digital notch filtering that could be enabled or disabled as well. Please know that this is a just a brief overview and we'll go more aggressively into these settings at a later date and shorter episodes as well that are more geared toward specific features. So let me know if you want to see any certain features in the comments below. But I do want to make a note of another thing. I have all these filters enabled and that's fine. If I were to go into a mode, for example, FT8 mode. So I'm going to scroll happily down to well, let me go ahead and use this fast button and then scroll down to uh, 074, right? And if I get to 074, and then I change the mode to, for example, upper sideband digital, uh, you know, it's not like uh, the ICOM 705 or the 7300 where you have different band stacks, or at least I can't find the band stacks in the same sense that uh, yes, you were an icon would work on and so then if I wanted to use FT8 you know FT8 you usually do everything on filtered as open as possible I would want to go through and I would want to disable my digital noise or notch filtering uh, I would want to go back through and I would want to turn off my noise reduction there's got to be a quicker way to do this uh, but there's no indications anywhere else on how to do it so in the meantime if you're using some kind of digital mode that doesn't require or want filtering you're going to have to go through and make sure you have all that disabled up here, with, of course, the exception of the antenna tuner. Ideally, I would also take auto gain control and set it to off. Uh, my finger is right here on the bottom of the radio. It's not hot enough to burn, but this radio gets warm. Uh, I'm not doing anything intensive, and it... It's, it's pretty warm. I might be willing to bet that we maybe see some cases of this thing overheating in the future. Of course, you do have the stands on the side here, too. And Josh over at Ham Radio Crash Course did mention that the stands aren't as nice as the 5105. And I tend to agree with him. They're uh, more brittle and loose. They're really they're cheap. In fact, they're not, but they almost feel like plastic. So there's your stand, and that might help with a little bit of airflow distribution. But I think what's going to happen is when we start to get these in the desert, like Arizona, we're going to see cases of these things getting too hot and overheating. I, I, I could feel it. Of course, if I then wanted to go back into lower sideband mode like I did, and I wanted to enable the filters, I'd have to go through and enable each of these filters again. So let's start in non-noise reduction, and we'll call that good for now, and find a signal. If I wanted to, and now at this point use filters, I could hit DFL, and I'll have a filter where I could actually shift. And so if I shift my bandwidth one way and another way, I have potential to, to essentially eliminate more noise. Right now I'm on filter one, and I'm moving filter one to the left or to the right. And if I tap on this button again right here, 
I could change my filter filter two to be offset the opposite direction if needed to or shift the other way as well. So let me go ahead and bring that back to zero and zero. This is kind of like the ICOM, uh, IC705 or the 7300. There's something weird there. If you adjust the filter too far over, see if we could do it again. Could have been just coincidence, but it seemed kind of weird that as soon as I adjusted that filter back out, it was fine. Might be something we have to keep an eye on in the future with other people as well. But you could also see that you could switch between different filter levels as well. So right now I'm on sideband. I, I like my bandwidth at 2400 and I don't have my shift right now. So filter two actually is a good idea. And we're going to close this. And now I should be able to hear maybe even a little bit better because I'm not listening to as wide of a signal, right? And so in another episode, we'll go into the filtering in more detail as well. But let's go ahead and go down to the CW mode now. And I kind of briefly displayed this in one of my episodes I just created really quickly. But CW mode does appear to work. And what we'll do is we're shifting all down there. I'm going to turn off all my filters. And if there's a better way and somebody sees it, let me know. But then I'm going to go over to CW mode. And here in CW mode, I'm going to find a signal. And we're going to demonstrate a couple of things. One thing I did observe, and I again, I can't find any indication that there is a zero beat or not on this radio, but it doesn't appear there's a zero beat. And even with the G90, there was a zero beat. So I can't hit a button and center on the frequency that the CW is occurring, which is kind of weird. However, I've already displayed it in another episode, but there is the ability here to do CW decode by tapping the app button and going to modem and under modem, changing the mode till you see CW. Once you see CW, uh, long story short, you could adjust the rate and the speed. So check that video out if you want to know more. If you wanted to perhaps do a little bit more with your CW, you could tap on key. And when you tap on key, what's going to happen is we're going to have a couple different menus. You have what I call menu set one and then menu set two if you tap on key again. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I'm on CW trainer on. If I'm on CW trainer off and I use my paddle, I'm going to be transmitting over the airwaves. And in order to set everything up, I first probably would want to be in CW trainer mode to make sure I have everything correct and then turn off the CW trainer to transmit. So with CW trainer on, I'm going to then tap key again. And I have a bunch of options here. The first option, which is option one, is auto key right, auto key left, and manual. So if I have it on manual, my key, which is an iambic panel, it acts as a, as, a, as a straight key. Meaning I'm going to generate a tone until I let go of the actual key itself. If that makes any sense. The next thing though is if I were to change this over to auto left, that means if I were to turn it up, I think my shorts will be on the left. I had that wrong. The shorts will be on the right and the longs will be on the left. I tend to like it the other way though, where it's auto right. And let's go ahead and get off that frequency just so we don't have to hear that. Okay, so that seems to work. But what happens if I bring this up to like 15 words a minute? Seems to work. And I'm probably too, too slow for 20. Okay, and then again, you can change things like your tone. So if you were back on that signal and you were to adjust your tone, it gives it a different uh, pitch. And the reason it gives you a different pitch is not everybody hears everything the same way or as well as others. So I'm going to go ahead and set that back to 800 for right now, and we'll move on. Tone level is how loud you actually hear your own tone. So if I was keying up and changing the tone level, I don't hear anything right now because the tone level's at zero, but if I were to increase that, it 
just to give you an idea, it almost changes the volume of your tone being produced. Again, being a brief overview, that was just a demonstration of some of the features this thing has. And I think it is really weird that there's no zero beat on this. But another thing I do want to mention is there's no way to it that I could find at least to adjust the actual meters on this radio. So what you see here is what you get. Let's talk about those meters. Right here, you have a meter showing you your current like signal strength or what you're receiving on the, on the, on the actual radio itself. Okay, and then over here, you have your standing wave ratio. If you were to key up right now, what would happen is your standing wave ratio should reflect accurately over here. And then this is going to show you the amount of power output. It changes over automatically to power output that you are currently consuming. I also was kind of interested that because this thing does get so hot, and I'm actually getting more concerned as the episode goes on, but I was surprised they didn't have a little feature here that shows how hot the internal temperature of the radio is because I think that's going to be needed for a firmware upgrade as well. But it appears that the SWR scan feature is working now, and if we tap on SWR scan, it automatically starts scanning SWR. But we can change the span from 1K up to 10K, and we could change the speed from 1X all the way up to 5X. So the larger the span, the slower the speed, the longer it's going to take. And the shorter the span, the higher the speed, the shorter it's going to take. Of course, I think the compromise there is, is if you're scanning faster, you're going to have a less accurate uh, refl uh, indication of what your standing wave ratio really is. Now, I'm doing this right now without my antenna tuner on, but if you had your antenna tuner on, keep in mind that it's going to scan the band accurate to it being tuned or the radio having the tune already. And then just hitting exit actually stops the scan itself, as you just saw. And the other option we see here is this voice call. And what this does is it allows me to pre-record a few different messages and play them back at any time. If I recorded CQ Parks in the Air, CQ Parks on the Air, I could tap this button and it will retransmit it and play it so I don't have to call it out on my microphone constantly since it is the same message and everything. Show you an episode on that in the future as well. If I take a time or a moment here to go to the general menu again, and I go into radio settings, I just wanted to make it kind of a couple other notes here. We have an area where we could change our line in level as well as our line out level. And these are basically for the USB-C that's on the side of the radio that goes to the computer. This radio will listen at a higher level if you have your line in level set higher or lower. So this goes up to, I think, 36. And the same with line out. If you have this line out cranked up to, say, 36, and you're doing FT8, it's going to throw the signal into the computer in a, in a very loud manner, meaning maybe over-modulated. So I kind of am keeping that at 22 right now while I'm working with FT8. A couple other things, though, is if we hit back to Gen, we're back in the main menu, we click on Display Setting, you could adjust things like your brightness. And so this is the backlight level. Okay, and with the backlight level here, I can go up to 10 and then I go back down to 1. 1 being the dimmest and 10 being the brightest. For the sake of this video, I'm trying to find a good spot, but I think I'll leave it around 4. And then we have things like our RF FFT reference. Let's see what that does. So you can see it basically made it so I am not seeing as much of the noise on the waterfall. Now, what is kind of weird about that, though, right, is, excuse me, how am I going to see where it is unless I go here, I adjust it, and then I click, okay, well, it's actually kind of maybe not as known, but it's something I talked about earlier. If I hit that checkbox here, and now I could adjust the reference level on the side, okay, so there we go, and you can see the reference level is now showing more noise. Now, I'm not saying that the noise isn't there now, but so that, that's a pretty good level right there for me, at least. And if I hit on display setting again, there's other options we could choose as well. Let's see what this waterfall reference is. You could see that my waterfall display has a tendency to show a lighter color or possibly more noise. So if I bring that waterfall reference down to zero or even negative, uh, it becomes more blue. But now if I go too far down, I don't see the signals as much as well, right? So what I'm doing is I'm going to adjust the waterfall reference to a place where I see that the signal is kind of strong. 
but there's not a lot of noise here in the waterfall display either. And right now, 3 dBm seems to be fine. The Waterfall FFT AVE, let's go ahead and just click on that here and see what happens. Let me read the user manual. I'll be back in a jiffy. I did find in a manual where it says and the only information about it on page 18 is that it's the RF spectrum display average, which I'm not necessarily sure about what it is yet. We'll look at that here in the future as well. Hey, me and editing again. I went ahead and I figured out what this is, so I am a little bit more detailed in my, my overviews. You can see right now that this part of the display, the signals are showing quick and disappearing quick, especially like this one right here. You know, So as soon as this guy's done talking, it'll drop pretty quick but maybe I want those signals to show or average down a little bit slower. And what I could do then is I adjust the RF FFT average and you can see the whole display just slow down a little bit. Even these, but if I speed it up here by bringing it down, it's faster, slower, faster. To me, the menu system seems like it has a lot of cool potential, but I just don't think that for example, now if I go to general, something's missing here. If I go to general and I go to system settings, we don't have any menu options for Bluetooth or wireless. In fact, I have no idea how we're going to make Bluetooth or wireless work. I do show that I'm using app version 1.1.0 with base 1.1.0. I could adjust my time right now by tapping on this button because I was selected on time. I could do all this cool stuff. There's, there's indications that this thing will actually work on a network because we could... We could actually check uh, the NTP server one and two. So we could put in for our, our time protocols and actually be able to update this via the, the web. But there's just nowhere to put in any kind of Wi-Fi information if I tap on NP up T update as well. So that's like another thing that's kind of missing. And not as important, but I would like to see the ability to be able to change the color of the waterfall displays and your display overall, kind of like Yesu does with the FTDX10. Uh, the firmware upgrade feature, we don't have another firmware yet, so I, I won't show you that quite yet. And then you could, of course, go to factory reset if you wanted to. But it seems like there's a lot of menu items still missing here, and it kind of makes it seem like they rushed this out like, and I didn't have it, but a lot of people say the GSOC was pretty rushed out and buggy. We have went over a lot of stuff as far as this radio goes, or an overview of what this radio can do, but we also talked about a lot of the bugs that it has. A few things I haven't mentioned, which I do want to mention, is this radio does have a micro SD port on the side, as well as an ACC port and a speaker out port on the side. And people are going to wonder about the weight. This is actually almost just as heavy as the ICOM IC705. Uh, here are some of the specifications if you needed to know. You could always pause this if you need to, to get more information on all these specifications. Concluding this episode, it's December 6, 2021, and if you ask me today, would you purchase this radio? I, I would tell you that I would avoid this radio for right now. Don't get me wrong, I see a lot of positive possibility and potential with this radio, and the 5105 I thought was a great radio, but there's just too many bugs in this firmware here. There's too many features that were promised that aren't on here, and uh, there's just a couple of concerns like this, this heat issue. I think that in the summertime, overheating is going to be a real big issue with these. However, if Zygu does everything properly to fix the firmware in a, in a ample amount of time, this will probably make a good radio. Hey, and so with it, uh, I'm going to go do some parks on the air, test this thing in real world uh, situations. I'm going to test the power consumption levels and quite a few other things I mentioned in this episode. So I'd like to thank you for watching this episode if you made it all the way through. And hey, if you're a hater and you watched all the way through just to try to get some kind of witty remark, you're actually a fan. So thanks for watching, buddy. You know who I'm talking about. I'm Ham Radio Dude. Until next time, 73.